We move now to an understanding of this linear displacement, uh, moving from linear to angular displacement, where before we used the distance, um, say on the on the x-axis, from a final to an initial point to understand the linear displacement. Now in an angular displacement, since we're in a more of a polar relationship, we're going to look at the distance that the angle makes as it scribes out the, the, uh, the arc length or the circumference of that circle. So we had defined the um, average velocity with a little v. Now we're going to use a definition for an average angular velocity where we use our little omega sign here with the hat on top. So this is the Greek letter omega. And we're going to use the same philosophy that we use for the linear for this rotating, um, rotate the, the rotation and the motion, so the displacement. Uh, in this case of a rotating rigid object, um, and we're going to define it as the ratio of the angular displacement through delta theta over a time interval. So we're still tied to a time interval, but now it's an angle that we make in a time interval. So we're going to define the average uh, angular speed, omega, as the final angle minus the initial angle. So if we started at 0 and, say, move to pi over 2, <coughs> we would have pi over 2 minus 0, and that would give us delta theta. And now we're tracking also the amount of time it takes to move through that angle. Uh, again, we look at the instantaneous angular velocity or speed, omega, of the rotating rigid object, and we define it again as a limit of the average speed, delta theta, delta t, as the time interval delta t approaches zero. So we're looking at, you know, with a snapshot, you know, we've got one instant in time. So we're collapsing down the, the, uh, the time interval, say, within an average, and taking one thin swipe through the center of that to determine what the instantaneous speed is. When a rigid object rotates about a fixed axis, as does the bicycle wheel, every portion of the object has the same angular velocity or speed and the same angular acceleration. So the angular acceleration, now we denote with this lowercase alpha, the average acceleration then is defined the same way we did the linear as the change in the velocity final minus the velocity initial again with respect to time so now we have units radians divided by time or seconds squared and the same instantaneous acceleration representation defined as the limit as the time approaches zero and again it is a measurement of radians per second squared. So let's take a little example. The rotor on a helicopter turns at an angular speed of 320 revolutions per minute RPM. Express this in radians per second. So we want to go from 320 revolutions per minute to radians per second. So we define the angular uh, velocity or speed, 320 revolutions per minute. One revolution, of course, is 2 pi radians. Okay, so it doesn't matter if it's in this plane or this plane. One minute is 60 seconds. We need to get it into seconds because that's our SI unit. So 320 revolutions per minute, when we do a factor units on this, 320 revolutions per minute times 2 pi radians per revolution, there's the second step, times 1 minute is 60 seconds. That's the third step. So we've tied 1, 2, 3 steps together as a factor unit here, 320, 2 pi, 1 over 60. So when we do that, 320 times 2 pi times 1 divided by 60, our revolutions cancel, our minutes cancel, and we end up with 33 and a half radians per second is equal to 320 revolutions 
per minute. So if we look at and we do some comparative uh, analysis or looking at our linear motion with a constant acceleration and our rotational motion about a fixed axis with a constant uh, acceleration where our variables are theta and omega and over here our variables are x and v, you can see that the relations match up one for one. Velocity final is equal to velocity initial plus the acceleration times time is equal to the rotational equivalent. Omega final is equal to omega initial plus alpha t. The same thing for calculating the distance. Delta x is equal to velocity initial plus one half the acceleration times the time squared. Over here we have delta theta is equal to the initial angular velocity times time plus one half at. Okay and the same thing here. Okay, so we've got like relationships. Let's check another example here. A wheel rotates with a constant angular acceleration of three and a half radians per second squared. Again, whenever you have per second squared in the denominator, you know it's acceleration. If the angular speed of the wheel is two radians per second, if you only have one second in the denominator, you know it's velocity or speed at the initial time zero. Through what angle does the wheel rotate between time initial zero and two seconds later? So because the angular acceleration in the problem is given as a constant, we can use the rotational kinematic equations. So delta theta is equal to omega initial times time plus one half the angular acceleration alpha times time squared. So we drop our values in. The whole right side of the equation has values. Two radians per second for two seconds plus one half, three and a half radians per second squared times two seconds squared. We start looking at where we can cancel out and remove some of our terms here. So seconds over seconds cancels out, seconds squared over seconds squared cancel out, which now lines everything up for just radians in the numerator, which is what we're looking for for delta theta. So delta theta is equal to four radians plus three and a half times two, which gives us 11 radians, okay? Because two because we had one half of four, so we simplified that. So 11 radians cancel. We need to convert from radians um, to revolutions because they want us to know the revolutions. One revolution is two pi radians. The radians cancel. So one and three quarter revolutions did the tire make in two seconds. Okay. What's the angular speed of the wheel at time final after two seconds? So now we know that omega final is equal to omega initial plus alpha t. So omega final is equal to two radians per second plus three and a half radians per second squared times two seconds. Omega then is equal to two plus seven, which gives us nine radians per second as our angular velocity. So now we'll look at um, developing some other relationships that help us to move between the linear and the angular uh, measurements, the angular world. And we're going to start with some things that we've already seen and develop them into some new units. So next time.